Hello guys, in this video we will add SQLize to the Next.js project. SQLize is a promise-based Node.js ORM for Postgres, MySQL, MariaDB, SQLite and Microsoft SQL Server. It features solid transaction support, relations, eager and lazy loading, read replications and more. ORM, or Object Relational Mapper, basically means that tables in your database are mapped to objects in your code. The final version of this code is in my GitHub repo, Next.js Starter SQLize. Ok, let's get started. First, let's add dependencies. yarn add SQLize and MySQL2. Now let's add some dev dependencies. We'll do yarn add env cmd. This will allow us to load our env variables when we run sqlize cli commands. So now we also need to add sqlize cli itself and sqlite3. We'll just this is in memory database and we may use it for testing. So let's run it with a flag dash dash dev. Okay, now in the root of our project, let's create um, .sqlize.rc configuration file. In this file we put the following code and we're basically going to create a database folder where we'll have our configuration for SQLize, our models, seeders and migrations. Let's create the folders. So in the root of our project we will create database folder and in this folder we'll have a models folder in this folder we also have migration migrations folder and then we will have the cedars folder and finally let's create config folder and in this config folder we'll create a file config.mjs in config.mjs file let's put the following code this is our configuration so in development we'll be using the following env variables then in test we may use a in-memory SQLite database and then in staging this is the staging configuration and we use pretty much have the same as the development but we also add logging false the same for production logging false so if you want to disable logging in your development just add logging false to your development because by default MySQL will be logging queries uh, into your terminal Let's update package.json folder with the following commands or scripts. So we will have model generate command, then seed to seed our database, migrate to run migrations, and to roll back either the previous migrations or all of the migration. In database folder, create a connection JS file and put the following code so we import SQLize from the SQLize and our config from the config MJS and here we outline what configuration we're going to use in production in staging in testing and the rest in development and then we export our connection
create dot env file in the root folder and in this file we place our environment variable so environment variables are username will be root password secret we'll call a table next JS starter and then there's a host name and our port usually port for my SQL database is 3306 but we're going to be running MySQL in a Docker and then we're going to port 3306 into 33061 on our host machine. Let's not forget to add .env file to .git ignore. And here we can just put .env and save it. The preliminary setup is done. Now we need to create a model and migration for that model. We can do this with a command yarn model generate. So let's do yarn model colon generate. This is the command we defined in a package.json. So and the name will be user. This is the name for the model and we'll have the following attributes. First, name will be string, and we'll put comma, and there is no space here. Last name will be also type of string, and then again, comma, no space, email, also type of string. So pretty simple. Let's hit enter. And we can see the model was created, and migration was also created. Migration was created in database migrations folder and a model was created in database models folder. First, let's tweak migration a little bit. So this is our migrations, create user in migrations folder. And first I like to use lowercase u and Right here in a down migration, we'll also put lowercase u. So I like to call my tables with the lower cases. And also created and updated it. Let's remove them and put the following code instead. We won't allow created it to be nullable. Also, we will put a default current timestamp in there if there is no uh, value in there. So the same is for updated at. And we can actually, in a down migration, we can actually remove the SQLize dependency right here and let's go ahead and save it. So let's double check. Also we don't need use strict is unnecessary inside the modules so we can remove the stuff right here. Let's update user model in here in database models user.js SQLite CLI created user model as a common JS module and also there's some changes I'd like to make so we will do it as a ES6 model so just delete this and put the following so first we have import model and data types from SQLize and connection from our connection file we have this function init user that will initialize the user class and right here we're gonna have our first name last name and email as types stream the same thing we put in the uh, sqlize cli command tell the model name to be uppercase like i said i like my tables to be lowercase but models uppercase the table name will specify uh, here, right here and then created it and updated it I'd like to have them with underscores that's what we put in the migration file right over here so created it and updated it have underscores so we're going to specify it on our model as well okay then we return user out of the init user function and then we just in call this function and return it Okay, now the fun part, let's create MySQL database.
I figured out that uh, the better way of running my SQL in development is using Docker. So this is what we're going to do. We'll put the following command. Docker run name. I'm going to call MySQL DB ports. We're going to need to map up the ports. So dash P. And we'll put 33. 061. This is the port we specified in the A and B variables. And it's going to map to the port in the Docker container, which is 3306. That's the normal port MySQL database run on. Okay, now let's put dash E and put MySQL root password and we'll call it secret the same thing that we put in the env variable and dash d we need to pull the docker image the latest one so we'll put mysql latest so now hit enter and let's wait till the image is pulled and then the docker container is run. All right, we got complete. So let's clear our command line and let's take a look at how we can connect to the database. In order to connect to the MySQL server and create a database, we can use a table plus. Right click, we can create a new connection and we'll use MySQL. So in the connection name, uh, we can do MySQL local. Host will leave the same, but the port will be 33061. Our user was root, and the password was secret. Now we click connect, and we are connected to MySQL server. Let's create the database we decided to call it Next.js Starter. So we'll click New, put Next.js Starter. Let's click OK. Now we can click Select Next.js Starter Database and can click Open. Obviously, we don't have any tables right here. So let's go and run Migration so we can create our first table, users table. Let's run yarn migrate to create a users table. And we can see that migration was run successfully. Let's go in the database and double check that the table is created. Let's click refresh. And we can see there were two tables created, SQLize meta, in this table, there is our migration. SQLize records the migrations in this table so it doesn't have to run it again. And then we also have users table. And in this table, we have our columns, ID, first name, last name, email, created at, and updated at. Let's connect the application to the database and query users data. We will take care of the backend first. So, in our pages API folder, let's create file users.js. In this file, we'll put the following code. So, in line one, we import our model and we also import logger on line two. So, the function handler needs to be an async function because we're going to be making a query using user model and we'll find all users and we will only take the following attributes the first name the last name and email so we're not gonna send the id or created it or updated it and it's always a good thing to put a limit on your query because you may have a lot of data in the database and if you just try to find all it will try to grab you all of them so good rule of thumb 
just limit your query. After we get our the users from the database, we, then, we send them back to the front end in a JSON format with a status 200. If, however, the query blows up, we catch error, we log it, and we send response 400 in a format also JSON telling what the error code is and what is the message. Let's create the front end code that will talk to this back end. In pages folder, create users JSX file. And let's put the following code in there. We're going to import axis from axis and use effect and use state. Well, the function users will do the following. First, we'll assign users. We're going to use use state, and it's going to be an empty array at first. And we also have error message and set error message use state in case our response come back with an error. The component loads will do use effect, so we have empty dependencies array right here. So as soon as the component loads, we'll fire off a request to the backend. We'll have API users. Then when the data comes back, we'll set the user's data. If we receive an error, which would be probably 400, we'll set error message. We will set error message from the response if there is response. But if something else happens, we'll just set our, we'll just set error message as message coming from error. The JSX here is quite simple. We will grab users, we map over each user, and we'll display first name, last name, and the email. Let's start the development server, yarn dev. Here is the application running on port 3000, and if we go to slash users route, we can see there are no users. Let's put a couple of users in a table. So we put first name, say Alex, last name Rusin, email alex at alex.com, created and updated it, we can leave it as default. Let's create one more user, John Doe, and John at John. Com. When we click off the rows, we can see our changes in green. We can preview the queries that we're going to make. And then after we're happy with that, we can just click on this icon to commit our changes. Okay, And there are two entries are created in the database. The ID is 1 and 2. In the browser, let's refresh the page and we can see two users are uh, displayed. This is how you add SQLize to Next.js project. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next videos.